What about if you found a guitar that you think you might buy? You know, uh, how do you look and see if it's okay? Well, the first thing I would do is look at the neck to body joint. Make sure there are no gaps or anything of the sort. Take it and move it a little bit. You don't have to, don't crank on it, but just move it a bit. See if it moves. If the neck joint moves, don't buy the guitar. <clears throat> look for obvious signs of damage, cracks, holes, that kind of thing. Look at your seams, your top seam. You're going to see where it joins, but there shouldn't be any kind of split or anything like that. Look at the bridge and make sure it's laying flat on the top of the guitar and it's not pulling up. Look at your saddle. If it doesn't have a whole, to, you know, a whole lot of height left on it and your strings are way up off the frets down here, there might not be any room to lower them properly. The neck might have tilted a little bit forward through time and it might need what's known as a neck reset and they're four or five hundred bucks if you can reset the neck. And so, you know, it doesn't make sense to buy a guitar for two hundred dollars and spend five hundred to have a neck reset. Okay, just find another two hundred guitar dollar guitar that okay. But <clears throat> Take the guitar and look down the neck. What you're looking for, well, you don't want, like I said, you don't want to see the neck kind of tilt up this way towards you as you're looking down. You don't want to see a lot of this. You don't want to see a whole bunch of that above. Okay, now if it's like this, you might be able to loosen the truss rod and fix that. But if it's bowed really heavily, the truss rod might not take care of it. Uh, it should have a little bit of a bow. And what you want to do to check that, that's called relief. And the reason it should have it is because when the guitar string is struck, it doesn't move up and down like this. It does this. Have you ever seen like in a movie or something? Uh, I think Halloween had a scene like that, but I'm not sure. Where they have the big long jump rope and you have one kid on one end and one kid on the other. And they're swinging it and you've got the kid in the middle that's actually jumping. Okay? That's what your string does. It does this. So in the middle of the neck, that needs to be just a little bit further away from the string because that's the greater, greatest arc that that string will make. The greatest travel it will make in that elliptical kind of arc that it does is right there in the middle. Or, you know, if you fret the string between it and where the body joins. So to check relief, what you do is put your finger on the string here and press down at the body joint and then you want to look up and you want to go three five seven you want to look at the eighth fret there'll be a dot here this is two dots but most of them will just have one until you get the 12th fret but the eighth fret you want to look at that fret and you want to hold it up to the light with both of those pressed and you should just barely see a sliver of light between the top of the 8th fret and the bottom of the string. If there's too much then the guitar needs an adjustment or there's something wrong with it. Now if, uh, if, it, if, if it's not very much but it's more than you think is proper you can ask to adjust the truss rod a bit if they have the wrench to do it with and you'll find that either inside the guitar up against here or you'll find it in a under a cover on the front of the guitar but you want to watch that a little bit out of adjustment can be adjusted if it's too much chances are that the truss rod is not going to do any good and you'll know because if it's got a lot of bow the strings will be way up off the fretboard toward the end of the guitar. 
and you'll know matter of fact what you want is you want about at least at the most about four thirty seconds of an inch between the bottom of the string at the 12th fret and the top of the 12th fret that's ideal but if you've got enough saddle some guitars come from a factory and and they got the strings way the heck up but they've got enough saddle that you can take it to a tech and he'll take that saddle out and take some off the bottom of the saddle and put it back in until he gets the action where he wants it so another thing what you want to look for when you look down the neck is your headstock what you want, you have wings, what they call wings. It comes out like this. These sides that bend out or extend out from the neck are called wings. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to look down that fretboard and you want to make sure that the head stock is not doing this or this. Okay, because then you've got a twist. Or something like that going on. Also, when you look down the frets, you might end up with a guitar that's got a hump where the body joint is. That might not be too bad if a tech can take and level the frets where that hump is so that they're all even. But that's something you need to watch for. Also, you can look kind of look down the tops of the frets. And if you see frets that are sticking up, the ends are sticking up, stuff like that, well then you got a problem with loose frets or something like that. So, I mean, it's not hard to do and you don't need a huge expensive price tag on an instrument to have a good instrument. I have purchased many guitars over the years for $50 or $100 at... Um, pawn shops and stuff like that that ended up being wonderful guitars they just need a little bit of a setup but that's you those are the common things that you want to look at you also want to make sure that whatever kind of guitar it is whether it's a six string or a 12 string it's got all the strings on it so you can make noise on it So that you know, kind of get an idea of what it sounds like too. But that's it. Uh, that's what you need to know about the guitar in general and what you need to know about how to examine one. The last two things I would show you is most people if you're going to play in groups, you saw that I was, excuse me. And I played with my fingers. There are songs that are written like that, but for the most part, if you're going to play in bands, if you're going to play with other people, you're going to play with a pick. Now, how do you hold a pick? Well, Pretty much like that. Okay. Now I hold a pick differently, slightly differently. Instead of holding a pick like this, I hold a pick like this. A lot of teachers would tell you that that's not good because it creates tension in this hand. Uh, all kinds of stuff but this is how I learned to play because I tried to play like this and the pick would go all over the place and so I just and this became natural for me uh, one of the things that I would tell you about playing is constantly be trying to relax both of your hands you don't want to 
trying to form chords and you don't want to do this or lock your wrist up. You want to be One more thing, and this is gross, okay? For most people, I don't think I have one of those picks. Let me see. Maybe I do. Maybe there's one in here. Yeah. Okay, a lot of times you'll get, I use a nylon pick. I use a Jim Dunlop, either a 60 millimeter, or I believe the one that I'm playing this with is like a 71 or a 70, 73. But a lot of guys will use this. This is a common pick that you see all the time. It's called celluloid. Well, these things are slick. And I'll tell you an old guitar player secret. Johnny Cash did this. A lot of the old players did this. Like I said, you'll think it's gross. But if these picks start slipping around in your hand, now they make gorilla snot and all kinds of stuff you can put on your fingers to kind of stick your fingers to your pick. Okay, I don't like that. I don't want that crap all over my hands. Okay. Uh, but, like in the winter time especially, when humidity starts dropping because all the heaters are on and stuff like that, then you'll have a lot more problems with that. One of the things you can do, believe it or not, so let's sit there a second. Stay still. Uh, just a tip for me to you. Make up your mind what you want to do. But we're talking about trying to play guitar. And nothing is worse than a pick that's spinning around in between your fingers and you can't put it where you want it on the string. So, all right. I hope that that's been helpful. And uh, stay tuned in this channel for more. Bless you. Later.